Hello again, everybody. Welcome. Um, so we are here with uh, Kate Dixon to discuss a very popular topic, um, salary negotiations. Hello, Kate. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thank you again for being here. So, Kate, you are a certified coach uh, on topics including salary negotiations, but also discovering your principles, authentic leadership, time management, uh, life planning, gratitude. There's a lot. Uh, I think people can expect from your talk. Um, so without further ado, I will just leave you to do your thing. So please go ahead. Awesome. Well, so I thought what I what we do today is start out with something that I teach to all of my salary negotiation clients. And that is a four step uh, process to approach your salary negotiation conversations. And um, while I'm speaking mostly about uh, how you would do salary negotiations for a new job, many of the um, things that I'm going to talk about are also applicable to um, negotiating your pay in your current job. So um, I'd invite you while we go over this, uh, this teaching part to Put your questions in the Q&A um, and I'll answer as many uh, questions as I can. Um, it'll take probably about 15 or 20 minutes for me to move through my um, my my coaching piece. Um, but I would love to hear from you and hear what kinds of questions are really important to you. So, so let's talk about the four part salary negotiation conversation recipe. Um, the first part is expressing delight. And people think, oh, gosh, why should I express delight? Because I want to negotiate this offer. But it's really important for folks to um, understand that you're excited and that you're willing to work with them on the negotiation. Um, and I know this because I've been on the other side of the house. I've, I've been a, a compensation professional for most of my life and worked for companies like Nike and Intel and American Express, created not only um, job offers, but also design pay programs. So you can take it from me. I've seen how this works on the inside. So express, express delight. That's the first thing you should do because again, this creates uh, a collaborative environment because honestly, I believe that salary negotiation should be a collaboration because it's a business problem. You are solving a business problem with them. You need to come to an agreement, which means that both parties are okay with what you're agreeing to. Um, and approach, approaching that like a collaboration can get you a lot more. And it's gotten a lot more for my clients than a, you know, cage match, you know, you win, I lose, I win, you lose. That doesn't really work. So the first part, you're going to express delight and that can show up in a lot of different ways. But one of the ways that I coach my clients to do it is to say something like, well, I'm so glad to have an offer. I'm glad to see that XYZ company thinks this is as good of a match as I do. That's all you have to say. You don't have to say, I love everything about this offer because if you're going to negotiate, you probably don't. But expressing delight, that's your first stage. And now we're going to move to the second piece, which is asking questions. So you're going to ask questions about things that you need clarity on in order to negotiate your offer. So, you know, you might want to ask them what a 401k match is or what the um, retirement contribution would be um, because you see that they have something like that, a program like that in, in the offer, but they didn't specify exactly what that would look like. Or you might ask them when the bo bonus payout happens during the year um, because that might uh, impact the kind of sign-on bonus that you might ask for. So I would recommend that you limit it to, say, um, three questions, maybe five questions tops. And one of the things to remember about the asking questions stage is you don't want to ask things that are easily answered by the, the materials that the company has already given you. So really read your offer letter well. Make sure you know every piece that's in there. And then if you get um, a benefits booklet or um, any other kinds of uh, attachments, read those too, because you don't want to waste your um, negotiation energy by asking things that you could have already found in, in the materials that you have. Now, that's not to say that 
All materials are super clear and evident. If you read it and you don't understand it, this is the time to ask for clarification. So remember, first one is expressing delight. Second part is asking questions. And then we come to the third part, which is making your requests. And the funny thing about this is, is most people think, oh, I'm gonna go for this piece first. But again, if you think about this as kind of a funnel, um, getting down to the most important things, you're creating a relationship, right? You're expressing delight. So you're really telling the person that you're negotiating with, hey, I want this to work out um, and I want us to collaborate, even though you're not going to say those words in exactly that way, right? So, so you're setting up the stage to collaborate. Then the second piece is you're asking questions that um, should be objectively pretty easy to answer, right? So you're allowing the person that you're talking with to demonstrate what they know about the company and, and help you to understand things. Again, not a lot of emotional or controversial things are happening in this stage. When we get to the third stage, which is making your requests, it's a little bit more, um, you know, you're, you're kind of in the body of the negotiations. And what I, I'll give you some phrasing of, of things that I recommend my clients use. Um, and let's say that you're asking for some additional base pay. So the way that I would construct that ask is to say, my research shows that jobs like this are paid between X and Y in the marketplace. And based on my expertise or my education or whatever it is that, that they value that you're bringing to the job, um, I'm targeting the higher end of that range. How close can we get? Okay, so that's kind of a sample script. I'm gonna break it down for you a bit. So the first part is my research shows that jobs like this are paid between X and Y in the market. So, you know, doing your research is something that's really important. There's a ton of online sources for salary, um, salary data, and you should be familiar what the going rate is um, for your, the kind of work that you do. Um, recruiters really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to really do that research. Um, so do your research. My research shows that jobs like this are paid between X and Y in the market. So you, you wanna give them a range. Um, and that range should probably be about 10% wide. So if, um, you know, it might be 50 to 55,000 or 100 to 110,000, right? So you, you shouldn't be um, giving them a range of, 50,000 to 51,000, right? <laughs> Give them a little bit of uh, a juicier range. And the reason that you're going to do that is psychologically, that's really helpful to, uh, to the company because they can see a range of ways that they can solve this problem. Now, it may be a range that's higher than they want, but again, you're, you're showing a collaborative approach. And then you know, you say, oh, I'm, I'm targeting the higher end of that range. Um, that allows them to anchor to a place that you're trying to get to. So if you're trying to make, um, let's say you're trying to make 60 grand. Um, and so your, your range might look like, you know, jobs like this are paid in the low to mid 60s. Um, and, you know, based on my my experience, I'm tar targeting the higher end of that. Um, you know, you, you don't want to tell them that you're targeting 60,000. Um, and then, you know, then they come back with, you know, 58 or, you know, 45 or whatever, you know, help them to, to see a little bit higher than, than you'd settle for, right? And then the last part of the request is how close can we get to that? Um, again, using the word we um, shows that you're collaborating. How close means that you're not going to, you're not saying, you know, it's 85 grand or you can kiss me goodbye, right? You, you want to give them um, opportunities to solve this business problem in a way that works for you. So how close can we get is great. You don't want to ask a, a yes or no question because it's super easy for people to say no when they hear yes or no question without it really actually being processed, right? So you don't want to say, gee, um, you know, I'm targeting the higher end of that range. Can I have it, right? Mm, no, you cannot, right? 
how close can we get? It's like, well, I'm not sure how close we can get. Let me think about that for a minute. That's exactly what you want. You want them to be thinking about it. So that's kind of the, the, the stage three, making requests recipe. And then the last piece is what I call ending on an up note. And what you need to do with this piece is make sure that you're having a good conclusion to the discussion uh, because research shows that the end of a discussion is more important than anything that comes before it. So, you know, again, leave your recruiter or your hiring manager with a great impression. And one of the ways that I teach my clients to do this is by thanking the person that they're negotiating with for their advocacy. Because, you know, again, your goal at the end of this conversation isn't to come to like, okay, now you met all my demands, right? It's It doesn't normally happen that way. Normally what happens is they have to go and get approval from somebody else. So what you can say is something like, um, I so appreciate all the work that doing on my behalf, or I appreciate your advocacy with the management team, something like that, um, and acknowledge them. Because when you think about these recruiters, many of them are carrying 30, even 40 requisitions at one time. They work so hard. And people, you know, especially candidates, don't realize all the stuff they're doing on your behalf. Um, and, and when you kind of take a minute and really appreciate them for that, that can leave a lasting impression. So, so you want to end on an up note. Thank them for what they, you know, what they've been doing for you. You know, another thing you can do is express confidence. I'm really confident we'll be able to work out uh, an agreement that works for both of us. You know, that's a great way to to you know end on an up note. But you're not done quite yet. What you need to do. Um, as soon as that piece is done is make sure that you know when the next time you're going to be speaking with your recruiter or hiring manager is. Because let me tell you the most stressful time in any salary negotiation comes immediately after you've had the conversation um, and they're going back and you don't know what's happening. So do yourself a favor and make sure that you have a, a great um, follow-up time. So, and you can take the lead on this. It's totally okay. Because remember how busy these recruiters are, the, the hiring manager is, they've got lots of stuff going on. And, you know, they care about you, but you care about when they're going to get back to you probably more than they do. So yeah. what I recommend is to say something like, um, well, when um, would be a good time for us to chat again? Um, and it may come up, they may already say this and tell you when it is and all that kind of jazz, and you don't have to worry about it. But if they don't, when would be a great time for us to meet, meet up again? Well, gee, I don't really know. I'm going to have to go back to the manager, talk to them, and it could take a couple of days. Okay, so if we said maybe next Thursday, would that give you enough time um, to have the answers that we're, we're looking for here? Oh, yeah, Thursday would work. Great. I have 930 free on my schedule. Is that free for you as well? Sure. Okay. Then let me send you an invitation to meet up at 930 on Thursday. So you've taken into your, your own hands so that you have a little bit more control over the next time that you're going to talk with somebody, but you're not being a jerk because that's my my number one rule about salary negotiations is you cannot be a jerk because nobody wants to work with a jerk and nobody wants to you know advocate on behalf of a jerk. So you're not going to be a jerk. It's totally okay to to set up a time. So that's the whole recipe. So express delight, ask questions, make your requests, and end on an up note. So that's the uh, salary negotiation conversation recipe. Very good. So, may I interrupt yeah. you very quickly? There's um, there's uh, some questions here that um, <clears throat> that I we could maybe uh, now that we have covered the four uh, points uh, mm -hmm. show on stage. For example, do you have any um, tips on this one? So we now understood that we have to research before we discuss any salary negotiation. Are there any uh, websites? Um, Mm -hmm. Any places that you would recommend, would you like to do this uh, now or would you do this more at the end of our talk? What would you say? 
So, well, let me just answer, um, you know, I can give you a couple of things, but, um, you know, it's going to depend on the type of work that you do. Now, um, salary.com is, has tons of great information um, all, right. all over the world. That's one of my favorite places to send people. But, you know, for tech folks, there are some really amazing um, websites, crowdsource data. Um, and, you know, they, <laughs> there are even places that you can go to see kind of the comparison between fang company, you know, uh, levels and, and the pay between them and all of that kind of jazz. And, um, and tr you know, most of the sources that I know um, that are publicly available are, are more U.S. centric and pay in Canada, as Canadians know, is a little different. Um, it's not wildly, wildly different, but what we do actually see um, a lower pay when you do kind of a, um, a currency conversion. And that's oh, kind of how it is. Okay. It's, it's that way with, with Europe mm -hmm. as well. Um, and uh, so at any rate, um, we can talk more about that later if you want. But, um, but I think salary.com is great. Just, you know, honestly, you can just do an internet search to say, you know, whatever it is that, you know, uh, AI specialist or software engineer or sure. you know, business analyst, and then salary, and then and then you your know, location you exactly. Mm -hmm. There's more yeah. and more uh, platforms that, that 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 make this easier for people. May I ask another question uh, from uh, another participant? Sure. So, what would you say? Um, is it better to fill in the form in the bigger range or the little? Uh, uh, yeah. Higher, uh, what, what would you? Yeah. What so would you do? my recommendation on this, um, and and one of the things that I, I do want to bring to light is a lot of places don't allow um, companies to ask what their salary history is, which I think is fantastic because that disadvantages women and people of color. Um, but pretty much everybody thinks it's okay to ask what your salary expectations are, and that's great. Um, and you know, there, there are things that you, sh you could do. And, you know, the, the phrasing that I talked about, about, you know, with making your request, my research shows that jobs like this are paid between X and Y in the market. Mm -hmm. I'm targeting the higher end of that. Um, you know, how's that landing with you? That is absolutely an okay thing to do. Um, if they're asking in an application, um, and you can get away with saying negotiable, <laughs> um, that's what I would do. I, I try to not have um, those kinds of, um, you know, salary expectation conversations um, on a form, if possible. Um, there are some places that say, we will not talk to you if you don't give us your salary expectations when you put in your application. Okay. And, you know, mm -hmm. honestly, I think that says a lot about the, the culture of the company. And you need to decide whether that's the company for you or not. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of think that's not a great way to do it, but you know, it may be the standard procedure and the kind of work that you do, but mm -hmm. again, your research is going to help you with this. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, shall we just invite a person on stage really quick? Let's see if sure. this works. Um, maybe Adobe, are you coming up on stage? Is this working at all? Do you see anyone coming up on stage, uh, Kate? I don't I see. Do not yet. Oh, there we go. Oh, yay. Hi, hello. Hi. Um, good day, Rita. Good day, Kate. Thank you so much, Kate. It's been a very amazing and interesting session with you. Thank you so much. Okay, so, yes, I have a question. Um, a recruiter reached out to me um, a few days ago, and um, we got talking, and at some point she asked for my salary expectation. Mm -hmm. So I'm a data analyst and I told her um, from 40 to 60,000 US dollars annually. Mm -hmm. And then that was the end of the discussion. So she mm -hmm. just said, thank you. And that was the end. That was so sad. So I'm just trying to know um, what I would have done differently. So I've, I've, I got the, um, the way you just explained it and I wish I took. I wish I was here before then. I'm sure I would have. I would have said it a different way. But is there something else I can do to like reach out to her again? Maybe to. I don't know. I wish I could just tell her. Sorry, I meant to say this no. instead. So 
I think this is a, you know, it's a really uncomfortable position for candidates to be in because the company knows what that, they're willing to pay and you don't know and you don't want to guess wrong. Um, so if you feel really solid about your research, you can use the phrasing that we've talked about. If you don't feel really comfortable and you're curious about them, what I would say is, hey, you know, without knowing more about your total rewards and um, and the role itself, it's hard for me to you know anchor in on the right number right now. So could you share with me what the hiring range is for the job? Okay. That is absolutely okay. And most places again will do that. They'll say, oh, you know, the hiring range is you know eighty to eighty five or whatever it is, or maybe it's forty to forty two. Or at any rate, you'll know whether you're in the ballpark or not. Yeah. Does that help? All right. Yeah, definitely. That helps. I'm going to try that out. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. You're Thank so you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, Kate, would you like to continue um, sharing some more tips and tricks? Um, and then well, we can to see. Do we have other questions? I haven't been able to we keep do. track of we the do. <laughs> Yeah, we do. Um, I can read you another one. Uh, yeah. so put, put it on stage because it's easier. <clears throat> so after searching the average salary regarding a particular role, if I know the exact salary, should we answer the exact salary range or should we tell them a little bit higher? <laughs> so you did Yeah, that. well, so here's here's my um, my answer as a former comp guru. Well, I'm a current comp guru as well. I do consult in this area. but But what I would tell you is, there is no perfect right number. It doesn't matter. I mean, there wasn't ever when I was doing this role, there never will be because there's so many factors that can come in, you know, not only how the, you know, one of the things you have to remember too about salary negotiation is the amount that a, an employer is willing to pay says a lot more about how they value that work rather than how how valuable you are as a person, right? And so, you know, what what we typically see is, you know, people who are tech people who go to work for tech companies get to pay get paid higher than tech tech people that go to non-tech companies, right? So all of these things um, come into play, the culture of the company, the kinds of bonuses or equity that they offer may come into play in terms of what their base pay looks like. So there's no real perfect right answer. Um, I love to give people ranges because, again, I think it gives them a, an opportunity to be successful, a lot of different opportunities to be successful. And, you know, think about what you really want. If, if you're really aiming for, you know, let's, let's say that um, your bottom line, your minimum acceptable is 55 grand, right? And I'm, I'm just using numbers because I can calculate them in my head and stuff. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what kinds of roles that you're interviewing for and 55 absolutely probably isn't the right number. So, but let's just put that out there. Yeah. So, so let's say your bottom line, you cannot accept a job that has, you know, that pays less than 55. Um, I would really anchor the bottom end of that range higher than 55. So if if you really want to you know be paid somewhere in the 60s, say you know low 60s, low to mid 60s, um, you know that really tells people 60 to 65. That's how that's really expressed, right? Um, and you know they may come back and say, well, we can't, we're not able to get into what you think is a competitive range, but what we can do is we can do 58, right? And that's still above your floor. And then you get to decide: does that work for you? Or does not that does that not work for you? Um, and if it doesn't, if they can't come, if they want to offer you something that's like 50 and your floor is 55, it's okay to say no. Um, because, you know, you're going to value the work that you do differently than some employers might. And if it doesn't work out, it's not because you suck at negotiation. It's because there's not a match between how the company values that work and how you're valuing that work. Very interesting point. Um, on this uh, same line, there's someone who asked, um, let me show this on stage, if it is advisable, if you think it's advisable to show the interviewer your willingness to prove your abilities through a trial period before giving them a specific range. 
a number mm-hmm. yeah, or salary expectation number. Mm-hmm. You know, I I think I'm going to say not really, but there there's some interesting things about what you're talking about this this trial period, um, and and we may be talking about the same kind of a thing. So if you're not able to get the salary to where you want it to, let's use that 55 as the floor, 60 is really you know between 60 and 65 is really where you want to be. And you get an offer for 58. So it's not really as high as you want. Um, but you still really like the company, you like the opportunity. Um, one of the things that I um, recommend that people do is n- negotiate uh, a time for a formal pay review in, you know, three months or six months or whatever, because I think, you know, like you were saying here, um, having giving the employer an opportunity to kind of um, see the value that you can create can really create a, a, a compelling reason to pay you more. So, so how I would phrase that is, you know, hey, I know that we weren't able to um, get to where I wanted to in the base pay. Um, I'm really still fascinated by this role and, and I'd love to accept, but what I'd like to also do is um, make sure that we can review the, my salary in three months or six months, whatever it is, um, once you've had a chance to really see the, the value that I can bring to this role. Um, and, you know, again, it's it, most places will say yes, um, because it doesn't cost anything to have a conversation. And my guess is that if you really are bringing that value, they're going to say, wow, you know, we got the deal of the century and we're willing <laughs> to um to pay a little bit more to recognize sure. that yeah good point um shall we uh, invite someone else for a sure. question to the stage we have janet hi are you there good hi uh, uh well the question that i do i almost they you almost answered it a while ago oh, okay was it was okay to say accept a low salary with the hope to get a better deal later, mm-hmm. as soon as you're in the company, because the main point is to get the job. And if you can ensure that your salary will go over over the time, then it's okay to say accept a low salary. Yeah, you know, I think it's a, a great question. I, you know, depend. It, it all depends on what your situation is. If you really have to have this particular job you might be willing to make that kind of a trade-off, but it's a lot harder to um, to get increases once you're in the company than it is to um, negotiate a higher salary to begin with. And, you know, research shows that most people who do negotiate their um, pay package get some sort of, um, you know, change in base pay, or maybe it's a sign on bonus or something like that. But, um, but it's, it's absolutely important, critically important that if the offer that you get isn't what you want it to be, that you at least try to negotiate it up front because it's, you're much more likely to get that higher base pay in the negotiation before you start. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Interesting. Thank you. Thanks, All right. That's very, that was very interesting. Let's see. Um, I think we still have some questions. Uh, for example, someone asks, uh, what do employers look for in terms of value in a candidate, uh, a part uh, of the experience can we share to up our value in their eyes? So what part of our experience can we share to um, increase our value to, to them? Yeah, um, great question. And I think this is one of those questions that works equally well with um, prospective employers as it does with current employers. And and what, um, what employers really are looking at um, in terms of value that you bring is they're looking at impact, right? It's not about, um, I work a million hours and I work so hard, which, you know, again, that's, that's awesome. What they want to see is the results, right? So anytime that you can bring numbers into the, you know, I, I raised our enrollment rate by 32% or, um, you know, um, we reduced, um, our the error rate um, to 
you know, 0 0.001 or, you know, what, whatever it is that, that resonates for your kind of work, um, being able to show, you know, that kind of stuff can be really, really compelling. Um, you know, for, for myself, um, as a salary negotiation coach, I can point to, you know, this person got, you know, 18% bigger pay package than when, before they started um, negotiating, right? But like in my leadership development um, practice, coaching practice, I can't really necessarily talk about that kind of stuff, but I can say things like, hey, you know, my clients have gotten better performance ratings and they've, um, they've done better in their 360 reviews with their, um, uh, their, their employees and things like that. Those are the kinds of things you know, what is, what is it that the employer cares about? You know, what it's, they want to further their mission. They want to, you know, bring more profit or, you know, anything that you can help tie to the goals, you know, to, to your personal goals, to your department's goals, which also means your manager's goals, um, and to the company goals, that's going to really resonate. So if you've got um, experience with a new technology and emerging technology that they haven't implemented yet, that you can really help them um, bring into play. That's awesome. They want to know that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There's another question here. I think it goes in the lines of do your research first. So someone says, I gave a salary expectation at the very first interview, which the recruiter agreed to, mm -hmm. but I didn't exactly know the range at that time. And later I found out that it would be way less than the market average. So is there any, any way to re renegotiate? So yes. Uh, and you know, People do think that um, once they've given their range, that's the end, and that's <laughs> final, like yeah. jazz, right? And and to be perfectly frank with you, um, I often recommend that people kind of reframe um, their expectations at the you know at the end of the process, either right before they get an offer, or you know if you need to after your offer. But but you know. Th this is kind of goes along the lines of the salary expectations we talked about up front, right? You don't know the full, um, the total rewards packet. So you don't know what the bonus plan is, whether they have a, an employee stock purchase plan or if they have equity or you don't know any of that kind of stuff. You don't know what the benefits cost. Um, and so you're kind of flying blind. Um, you also don't know everything there is to know about the role. It's like so, speaking a different language almost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, and it's okay. And, and the employer realizes that. And yeah, they might be a little bit ticked that you, you know, change your mind. But the reason that you're changing your mind is because you have more data to make your mm -hmm. choice and make your, you know, make an informed decision. So um, it's perfectly okay to say, um, wow, now that I have learned more about what the company expects of, of this role, and what I'll be able to bring to the role. And now that I know, you know, what the total rewards um, package looks like, um, I need to revise my, um, the, my expectations up a bit. Um, and, you know, we had originally talked in the low to mid 60s. I think based on what I now know, we really should be talking upper 60s to low 70s. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How close can we get, right? Yeah. Exactly. Shall I hand the mic again to uh, someone else that wants to ask a question on stage? Is that all right, Kate? Yeah, yeah. Me, Sakit, are you there? Yes. Hi. Uh, hi, Rita. Hi, Kate. Hi. Um, so, so thanks for so so clear, concise, and and very insightful uh, feedback. I think these are very helpful tips. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, there may be times where we have competing offers, right, uh, from multiple firms as we are in the job market. Mm -hmm. So, what is the best way to go about negotiating if we have a better offer or a competing offer uh, from other firms, right? Uh, we. I understand we should be looking at the overall package, including stock options and variables and things like that. But uh, in terms of the language, what is the best way? Because uh, we, I don't want to be putting a feeling that I'm just here for the salary uh, and the numbers game. 
Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations. If you're in that kind of a position, it's fantastic. Um, it's also a lot more complicated. But one of the things that I recommend is to really kind of look at the offers together, think about the organizations, think about the roles, think about the leadership, which one is kind of what I would call your A um, offer. Which one do you really, really want? And that's the one that I would concentrate on negotiating. So you could say something like, you know, hey, as you know, the my skill set is in really high demand. And I'm I'm very fortunate to have a couple of other offers here. Um, and um, you know, one of them has a you know 15% more in terms of uh, base pay and bonus. Um, this is the one that I really want to take. What could you do to make that decision easier for me? And just, you know, and this is also a time where you need to be quiet, right? <laughs> this is one of the things that is, is an important tool in your toolbox of negotiations. Once you put your requests out there, be quiet. It's so hard to do. Silence is really hard. Let them be the ones to jump in. Right. And and they may say, oh, wow, this is the highest we can go. This is absolutely the max we can do. And you could say, well, I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it could is, is this something, you know, given the fact that I have these two other offers, is this something that we could uh, get some uh, additional feedback from the leadership team on? Very you know? nice. Yeah, very nicely said, very nicely put. Uh, we have nine minutes now left. Um, Kate, uh, how would you like to do this? Would you like to share uh, some other points or would you like to tell us what are, what the most or the biggest uh, takeaways would be for people um, when negotiating a, a salary uh, so, increase? Um, anything else yeah. you want to add? I think my my biggest takeaway for for everyone here is don't take this process personally because it's not personal. Again, you know what a company is willing to pay says about it says a lot more about what how they value the job than it does about your worth as a human being. And your worth as a human being is way way more than you know salary and stuff like that. So so it's it's not personal um, if you don't hear back from a recruiter in you know a couple of days that doesn't mean a you're a bad person or b they are trying to recruit somebody else because they didn't like you pushing back on the offer um it means that um probably the recruiter has too much on their plate and that there's um additional discussions that are going to happen this is not personal this is a business transaction and the more that you can think of it as a business transaction and create a little bit of emotional distance from this where you're not, oh my God, if I don't get 85,000, then I'm a loser and I don't deserve to get this job. You know, don't do that because it's really, it's not personal. This is a business transaction. And if you can't make it work, it's not because you're a loser. It's not because they're terrible. It's just because it's not a match. And that is not personal. And, you know, you really want to find those things out before you start working with the company, then wait and figure it out after. So, again, this is not personal. Um, that emotional distance will, will serve you. And, um, and, and, yeah, you know, keep be curious, right? If, if you get an offer that's different than um, the, what the hiring manager said, ask them about it. Hey, this is, this is uh, you know confusing to me. Um, the hiring manager said this offer was going to be 67.5. And what I'm seeing in the offer letter is 65. Um, could you help me understand that? Oh, gosh, I didn't know that the manager had made that, you know, thing. Oh, we got made a mistake. Great. You haven't, you know, you don't want to accuse people of, you know, being mean. And that, that's not their intent. Business transaction. It's not personal. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, we have tons of other questions uh, left. We don't have a lot of time left. Left. There was someone who asked. I cannot really find the the, the question, um, the specific question here, but something related to the pandemic. Um, so, like the salaries uh, and the pandemics and the negotiations. Yeah. Would be well, different. Would it be an excuse for a company to uh, pay you less or? 
have you seen salaries increase on the other side for specific? Yeah, you know, it's, it's fascinating because I, I did see last year at this kind of time of the year that there were some um, companies who were saying, hey, everybody needs to um, hold tight and you know, maybe the executives are taking a salary cut or we're not giving salary increases this year. But what, what I'm seeing now is um, kind of a race for talent because we are seeing yeah. the great exodus, right? People are, uh, there are tons of people who are, you know, giving notice and they're doing it because they're not happy with the culture of the company that they're working with. They might not be happy about their pay. There's all kinds of reasons and people are not putting up with bad employer experiences anymore, which I think is fantastic. Um, so, you know, knowing that that's kind of the, the what's going on, um, I I wouldn't be too worried about not being able to get your market value. I think you you can, and if you've got a, a specialty skill, uh, you might even be able to parlay that into above market wages as well. Um, the one thing that is a little weird now, and um, the companies that I consult with haven't really landed on a single one right way of doing this. That is remote um, pay. So some places pay remote workers based on where the remote worker lives. Some yeah. pay based on where the company headquarters are. Some um, of them pay based on a national average. That policy, those policies and practices are still kind of uh, not well formed. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of companies that I consult with are doing kind of a, a hybrid model, three days in the office, two days off, out of the office. Um, some are doing, you know, there's, there's just a million different practices. So, um, I can't really tell you, you know, there's one, one way where, where I could do that, you know, two years ago, um, there just isn't a single approach right now. Yeah. It's a learning, uh, process anyway, for every, uh, mm -hmm. every of us, every one of us in, in the companies included. Okay. This has been so good. Um, any last words that, uh, you want to share with us and how our, uh, viewers can uh, get in touch and just tell yeah, us well, as we wrap it up, please. My, my big advice is do this, you know, just go ahead and try to negotiate your pay anytime you have the opportunity, because, <laughs> you know, even if you don't get any, any increase out of it, um, what you're getting is experience, live experience, which is pretty um, uncommon to be able to get. So it's okay, you know, ha try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but, but you will be seen as somebody who cares about and advocates for themselves. Um, and that's always a good thing. And it might work better next time. So, um, and you know, we do know that most people do get something when they when they ne negotiate. So don't hesitate. And actually, just you know, put the the conversation recipe uh, to good use. Um, I also wanted to let everybody know that the name of the the title of our presentation, "Pay Up: Unlocking Insider Secrets to Salary Negotiation," is also the name of a book that I wrote last year. That's available in you know all kind of major. Um, platforms. Um, and I have an online class for people who want to do things at, a, at their own pace. And then I also have um, individual coaching that I offer too. So, um, you know, please do reach out if you have any questions about that. My website is katedixon.org. Um, there's lots of articles, free articles you can um, get there that talk about salary negotiations. Um, and I really thank you so much, Rita, for, for all of your great work in facilitating our session today. I'm, I'm super excited to have had that opportunity to be here. Me too. I think this went very well. Um, again, we could have stayed here for way longer and all the participants, they've been raising hands, asking questions. I did my best to keep up with, uh, with most of them. It's impossible to keep up with all of them. Um, Kate, thank you very much once again. I'm sure we're going to stay in touch. And uh, for all the participants, thank you as well. And uh, make sure you connect with Kate, you drop her a line, you check out her book. And uh, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the event. And see you next time, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.